bottom of the screen there on the right, his opponent, Andrew Jessup. Their team has registered two copies of Grixis Control and then Dredge in the modern seated deck that's had a bit of resurgence this weekend of its own. Yeah, um, big update for Dredge in the form of Creeping Chill from Guilds of Ravnica. We'll see if we get to that one, but I think it's going to come into play in the, the matchup here playing against Azorius Control where Terminus is a huge deal and having that extra form of reach can matter a lot. Yeah, so we have Grixis versus Sultai that you were mentioning here. Now, both of these, I feel like, at their core are blue-black control decks. Yeah, definitely. Uh, these are both decks that are bringing Thought Erasure to the table. Yeah, something I expect to be pretty good in this matchup. They trade some lands to start. Uh, their splash color is going to determine their mid-range threats here. Uh, for Tangem, it's four copies of Nicol Bolas. And for Jessup, it's going to be cards like Vraska Relic Seeker. First play of the game was one of those Thought Erasures from Tenjim's side was hit by a main deck Syncopate from Jessup. That's one that you kind of want to fire off at the first opportunity you get, so that exchange makes sense. Protect your hand as well. Definitely a good Syncopate. And he wouldn't have been able to get this one, though he certainly would have liked to. Yeah, Treasure Map from Tenjim. He's got a full four copies of the card in the main deck, really Planning to dig in in this format. Oh, yeah. Treasure Map both generates mana advantage, which can be huge in matchups like this, and card advantage over time once you get those treasure tokens, start sacrificing them to draw some cards. And for Jessup, his, his first actual proactive play of the game was one of his four main deck copies of Nicol Bolas the Ravager. Resolves here, and it discards a card for Andrew. He'll discard an excess land. Yeah, this is going to be quite a few lands to pitch. Both of these decks are going to be relatively heavy on that. Uh, for Tenjum, he's got 26 lands. Though the real concern is getting this Nicol Bolas off the table before it can transform. All right. Well, not this turn. Andrew Tenjum does make Search for Ascanta. That Search plus Treasure map represents a lot of value in the long term, but in the meantime, he's going to take some hits off Nicol Bolas. Drops to 16. I mentioned getting Nickel Bulls off the table. What are we looking for in terms of spot removal that could deal with this? So both of these decks are fully stocked with four Vraska's Contempts. That's going to be your best removal spell in terms of really anything. Tenjum also has a couple copies of Walk the Plank. Well, this is an interesting one, Ryan. Tenjum had a Vraska's Contempt, but he went for Search for Ascanta that turn, thinking he could afford to take a hit off the Bolas, and then got hit by a Thought Erasure and no longer has a way to remove it. Yeah, that's a good swing in Jessup's favor in the short term. Uh, Tenjim does have a treasure map that he will be transforming on this turn. The search will help him ser find additional copies of Raska's Contempt. But for now, he is going to get beat up by that Nickel Bullis a little bit. Yeah. Now you're worried about that transform. Uh, fortunately, inside, Jessup did not hit land five that turn. So we're still a ways off the Planeswalker. Mm -hmm. This damage is going to add up, but uh, one thing about decks playing Nickel Bolas to Ravager, they're generally not heavy on these beatdown elements. So really, once you get the Nickel Bolas off the table, you should be safe with your life total for at least a little while. Karn Scion of Urza from Tenjim pluses, and it shows two cards. It's going to show a Overgrown Tomb and a second copy of Search for Ascanta. Neither of those of great consequence, especially yeah. given that the treasure map's going to be transforming here. And I like that Jessup goes for the search for Ascanta. That redundant copy is not going to really matter anywhere in the short term. Chris's control also not really going to answer the first search. Let's see if Jessup has brought any field of runes to the table. It's tough with the post-rotation mana bases, and it does not look like he has any copies. Yeah, he doesn't. He does hit land five that turn in a basic island. And swings with Bolas. Well, check up on those life tolls there in a second. There we go. Four went from the other side. So Tenjim drops to 12. Jessup's actually just ignoring the Karn with these attacks. Well, here's a, here's a reason for that. <laughs> Vraska's contempt for Jessup. Okay. Ooh, get those Ryan Overturf tokens out. Yeah, that's been a while. All right, we get Treasure Map turning into Treasure Cove. I was thinking we could have had both our tokens there if Andrew just would have held off on the Vraska's contempt, but... <laughs> just yeah. just isn't playing along. Yeah, that, that Karn is a juicy target for Jessup there. Search for Ascanta from Tenjum, and now he has both Search and Cove going. He's down to 12, but a lot of extra cards on the way. Mm -hmm. Looks like he already drew something big. 
Tapping six here. We're going to see one a Vraska Relic Seeker. Yeah, that's about the best thing that he could have. <laughs> <laughs> Two copies of that in the main deck. Uh, that's really his top end for his strategy. That's how it looks like he's planning to win most of his games. He does supplement, supplement this with four copies of the Eldest Reborn. That would have been a reasonable one to pick up there as well. And now Tenjum is going to pull farther ahead on Jessup's side. He had no plays that turn. Ooh, and how about this interaction? When you minus three Vraska, it makes another treasure token. Which actually really matters here. Yeah, the treasure cove just lets him draw more cards. A plus from Vraska, going to make a pirate. He's 2-2 two, two Menace. We see, yeah, the six man of Vraska, that ability said minus three to destroy a creature, artifact, or enchantment, and then get a treasure token. And uh, you're seeing some of the issue in the control mirror when it comes to game one. Tenjum made that pirate there, and Jessup fired off a moment of craving. Great. You won't be seeing that one post sideboard. Yeah. In a lot of ways, this feels to me like a more of a Jund mirror than a control mirror. You know, these, these decks are mid ranging, and as a result, they're caught with all these reactive. Like, about 10 reactive cards each, I'd say. Yep, and you're really seeing a lot of that with the fact that these decks are main-decking copies of Thought Erasure. They're playing pretty light on counterspells. Jessup does have 3 Essence Scatter, 2 Syncopate, but that's very light permissive elements. So with Treasure Cove, 3 Treasures and Vrask in play, Tenjum then adds a, a, another copy of Karn Sign of Urza to the table, and Jessup's going to pack it in. So game one, our first game on the match as a whole, is going to go 1-0 for Andrew Tenjum. As for as good as Nickel Bolas Ravager is, pound for pound, Frasca Relic Seeker, just a stronger card. And it makes sense it costs six. Yeah, I mean, especially in this matchup where the strength of Nickel Bolas to me seems that it costs less than Vraska. Right. And... Uh, it is a 4-4 for 4. It's reasonable pressure, but you saw there, Jessup gets a couple hits in, and then he's backing it up with Moment of Craving. He's not yeah. able to cross the finish line in any meaningful way. So I'm going to assume post-board that he can back it up with some better cards. I mean, the, you know, when you talk about sideboarding with Jun-style decks, <laughs> it, it's almost cliche to say, board out the bad cards and board <laughs> in the good ones. But in a large way, that's just what Jessup does here. Tried and true strategy. Bad yeah. cards out, good cards in. Yeah, for Jessup, we have three Disdainful Stroke, three Thief of Sanity, two Golden Demise, two Negate, two Sorceress Spyglass, an Arguel's Bloodfast, a Duress, and a Fungal Infection. Quite a lot of this is going to be good here. You're going to want some number of those Disdainful Strokes, both to deal with the Vraska Relic Seeker and even Vraska's Contempt on your own threats, as well as Karn Cyan of Urza. Thief of Sanity, I like a good amount. Uh, this is a new one from Guilds of Ravnica. It's blue-black one for a 2-2 flyer. When it deals combat damage to your opponent, you pick up the top three cards of their library. You get to exile one under the Thief of Sanity, and you can cast that for the rest of the game with mana of any color, and the other cards go into their graveyard. It's pretty frustrating in Steel Deck. It actually mills you pretty quickly if you're not just losing to your own spells. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I, I figure it's pretty good in standard as well. A uh, couple copies in the gate. Those are great. This is a Planeswalker every strategy for Tenjum, so those negates will play very well for Jessup. Two source for a Spyglass. Again, Planeswalkers. Sounds great, uh, yeah. Arguo's Bloodfast is great for grinding, and Duress will be great for much the same reason as all these other cards. So Thief of Sand, most of these make sense as far as what I would expect out of a mid-range sideboard. Uh, you know, thinking back to when we had blue black mid-range last format you know so i would ex cards like spyglass argol's bloodfast disdainful stroke negate i would expect all of these out of the sideboard on tenjum's side my question here is does tenjum expect thief of sanity do you think is this how much buzz has been an, oh yeah this will be in everyone's sideboard for example it's not in tenjum's right um, and part of that is that tenjum is blue is his third color and the mana is a little bit rough. Um, but because, you know, you're in this mentality where my sideboard is just more spells, I'm trying to win with Planeswalkers, it could be something that he totally misses. And again, when you look at decks people have been playing so far in this new standard format, there's so much variation where nothing is going to be stock at this point. So you might have to take an L to one of the post-sideboard games to figure it out. Uh, and then on Tenjum's side... He's got four Duress, two Disdainful Stroke, two Moment of Craving, two Negate, two Spell Pierce, a Cast Down, a Golden Demise, and a Ritual of Soot. 
it's a little bit more tenuous on Tenjim's side because you know you're still facing down at least Nickel Bolas. So you probably want to at least maintain your Vraska's Contempt. So Te Jessup will as well to answer Planeswalkers. Right. But the question is, do you want to reach for... You can't reach for Cast Down because Nickel Bolas is a legendary creature. So you're going to miss on the Thief of Sanity if that comes up. I don't think you want Moment of Craving. I think you mostly stick to these duresses, these Disdainful Strokes, these Negates. With the way that Tenjim might sideboard, and I agree with what you're saying here, I, th I worry he might get caught off, off guard by this Thief of Sanity because the only ways he really removes it, right, are golden, are, uh, cast down, Moment of Craving. I, I guess he has four copies of the Eldest Reborn in his deck, and that's something that probably is staying in. Yeah, those probably won't go anywhere. Though post-sideboard, Jessup's going to be... Uh, he's going to have a couple answers. He can Disdainful Stroker and negate that. You still might see him steal a game with the Thiefs. Yeah, and return him two copies of Assassin's Trophy. It's a card he'll keep in, um, but only two. And even then, ramping, giving your opponent extra land in this kind of matchup so early in the game could come off as a win. Yeah, yeah. Jessup, uh, we did not see them in game one, but he does go all the way up to three copies of Dream Eater, which is a Ooh. pretty powerful card. Uh, one thing that's noticeable about notable about, about the card to match up like this is it has that kind of mana war effect, but it is just non-land permanent which can matter in the face of opposing Planeswalkers. Okay, well, for those of you watching us over on Twitch.tv, thank you for joining us in the Feature Match area. We'll be broadcasting here all weekend. Uh, Twitch.tv slash SCG Tour. Um, and if you are not a subscriber, remember, we do have a Twitch subscription program, so uh, getting, you do get emoticons and a badge if you subscribe to our channel. Also get to decide... Um, the quarterfinal quarter match. Final match, yeah. Don't throw your opportunity to vote away. Of course, those happen on Sunday afternoon. For our team events, we do cut to a top eight of teams. Expect to see a lot of sweet decks in the top eight of this tournament. 273 teams in attendance this weekend. And this time, both players mulliganing to six and keeping. So we're going to resolve some scries and then get underway for our second game. One thing I do like about Jessup post-board here, well, especially if they're on mulls to six, is that his threats do cost less, which seems like it can matter here. It does, though Tenjum has a big edge in that department with the four treasure maps. Oh, yeah, that card is great on this situation. Right. You can get going with a much lower mana investment, and then the treasure map just helps you find lands. And if you miss three times, then you just have the treasures to recover. Well, Duresses have come in out of the sideboard, so let's take a look at what Jessup has. We look Looks like we have a Thought Erasure, a Disdainful Stroke, a Sorceress Spyglass, a Second Land, and I believe that's a Thief of Hope. That would be Thief of Hope. Yeah, so currently... You know, he has the Sulphur Falls there, the Swamp is the land in hand, so he ha he'll have access to his colors, so he'll want to find a land or two here. As far as this Duress goes, y you wish you could just take the Thief of Sanity. <laughs> yeah, the Thief of Sanity. So, of note here, I believe Jessup scryed to the top, which actually should influence Tenjin's decision here. Makes it feel like there's probably a land available. That That's, prob that's about what you're looking for. Yeah. There, it's just snapped yeah. right off the top. <laughs> Second Sulphur Falls. Does take the thought erasure. Actually, that's a notion. I mean, these Demir cards, they're all spooky. <laughs> they all look, they're all kind of like some vague, shadowy thing. They have a similar aesthetic. You're right, though, that is a notion, Rain. And here is that Thief of Sanity. It's made it through a turn cycle. Andrew cast it, it resolved, and now he's untapping with it. See if that guy can go to work. One thing about Thief of Sanity is that unlike some of its predecessors, you can't use it to gobble up lands from your opponent's library. You can only Ooh. use it to cast spells. And we mentioned in sideboarding about how this card might be a runaway, especially as Tenjin may have boarded out answers for it. And, Brian, that feels like exactly what's happening here. Right. And Jessup has hit his fourth land drop, so that's going to give him access to most of the spells he can find from Tenjin's deck. So he's in a very good position here. Yeah, here's Thought Erasure as well from Jessup. On Tenjim's side, we see three more lands, Vraska's Contempt, and Karn. 
I got to figure that that Vraska's Contempt is oh, priority yeah. number one for Tenjim. As such, taking it with the Erasure is priority number one for Jessup. The Karn on the following turn is pretty medium, especially given that the Thief of Sanity can just try to steal more of Tenjim's Contempts. Well, well, here's the thing. Thief of Sanity had the option to steal a Vraska's Contempt this turn, but Jessup chose something else, which... Makes me think he's got this covered. He's got to have something real right. good under there. Right, because if he sequenced that the other way, if he thought Erasure's first, then he he could have taken the Contempt. I mean, there's a ton of reasons here to think that, that this Karn's not going to resolve. Yeah, yeah, it could just be a counterspell. Tenjin really does not want to see one of his copies of Vraska Relic Seeker cast against him. Here's Karn. And Jessup, I guess the Karn will resolve, or is it not going to hit a Disdainful Stroke? And it will. Yeah, yeah, Tenjim knew about that one. Oh, yeah, yeah, we knew it was in the opener. Saw that off the duress. Well, Thief of Sanity is just going to go to work. Here's another two. Tenjim down to 16. More cards for Jessup. You know, I play, I play like to play zero creature control decks. A card like Thief of Sanity is something I... I get real... I hate seeing this card out of the sideboards of opponents. It's such... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you hate losing. Yeah, I hate losing. <laughs> Here is... Notion Rain from Andrew Jessup. Surveil the bones, as it were. Yeah, one blue black. Surveil to draw to lose to life. Jessup doing a reasonable amount of surveilling in his deck between the Erasures and the Notion Rain, but he's just playing them because they're good cards, not taking advantage of any surveil synergies this weekend. Jessup looks like missed that fifth land drop, but he will cast a Duress, or rather he'll cast Tenjim's Duress, and see that Tenjim just has three lands. An opportunity for Tenjim to top deck a Planeswalker here. Yeah, but that was an interesting window for Jessup. It was either this turn or next turn he wanted to catch the Duress. That window with Jessup, or Tenjim going up to five lands the next turn, you could catch another copy of Karn, whereas if you waited until this turn, it'd be another look at catching a Vraska. Yeah. For me, the question would be, what's that hidden card? If the hidden card is something like a sideboard negate, then I'm really comfortable playing <laughs> yeah. the way that Jessup was playing it. Right, yeah, you only have one mana left over. He was clearly digging for lands in some capacity with the Notion Rain. Top cards, again, this is the third hit of Thief of Sanity. Looks like there is a Vraska and a Karn in here, so... He took the one he can cast. H how worried are you... When your opponent hands you back the two guards and says, I don't want this Vraska or Vraska's Contempt, I took something else. Yeah, I mean, I think, <laughs> I, I think Tenjim already knows he's really behind, <laughs> but you're, you're right. That, that is yeah, not, okay, right, you fair. can isolate that, but yeah, that, that's yeah. the game. I was going to be like, what, if you're Tenjim, you have to think, what, what card's better than those? Right. I don't even know. I was uh, playing a draft game last weekend. Uh, I guess one of the local players in Minneapolis. And I was just really far behind. And he was taking a little while to make a decision. And I said, hey, is your hand good? Can I just concede? <laughs> 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 that, that game felt very similar right yeah. there. So Andrew Jessup evens things up at one game apiece. And it was this was really one of the, what we talked about. Uh, a Thief of Sanity running away with the game. Let's go back to the drawing boards here then. Tenjim knows about it now. Right. Though the, the potential answers that he has are pretty mopey, and they, they yeah. do exactly one thing. The answer, Thief of Sanity. Moment of craving, cast down. That is the only role they serve. Uh, in, in the main deck, you know, he's going to still have access to those Vraska's Contempts, as we saw, those two copies of Assassin's Trophy. Yeah. He's got to walk the plank in the main deck that it's possible he boarded out. That catches Nicol Bolas as well. Yeah, if you boarded that one out, bringing that one back in, if you expect there to be more targets, that does make a good amount of sense. Though we did see Jessup doing a little bit of re sideboarding as well, and that's kind of the powerful aspect of having this creature sideboard in your low creature count control deck. Do you have them? Do you not? Do you have your opponent just get stuck with some bad removal spell in hand? And even if Tenjim is Tenjim's bringing in these walk the planks, we saw a lot of duress and duress style effects fired off in the matchup anyway. Yeah. Jessup's pretty good at defending it for the Thief of Sanity. Yeah, with so much duress and negate going on, uh, those creatures really do stick or matter in this mass sex situation. Um, you know, you, when Tenjim failed the removal check on it, 
the game warped around it. Oh yeah, this the advantage just snowballs in Jessup's favor once that Thief of Sanity starts connecting. Some updates from the rest of our game ones that are all complete now for the, the Hot Sauce Games players. They take all three of the game ones. Turned out Matt Hoey winning game one of the Grixis Mirror over Noah Walker. And we have Joe Bernal's Azorius Control Deck taking a game off Dredge. I do like Dredge this weekend. It's a little surprising to see Dan Jessup playing Dredge. So why's that? I just, I've seen him play a lot of Death Shadow, seen him play a lot of Teamer mid-range decks in the standard. Dredge is really on the opposite end of the spectrum to these style of decks. It's a difference in play style for him, for sure. We'll find out in our standard match if players are able to keep on seven cards. Last game, we did see both players go to six. And Thief of Sanity run away with it from there. Looks like a keep on both sides. So we will have a seven, full sevens for each player this time. As they go toward the deciding game. And some tap lands to start. Now looking at those threats for Tenjum. Not sure I'm going to say. We'll see Thought Erasure. We'll get a look at Jessup's hand. We have, looks like, three more lands. We have a Dream Eater, a Nickel Bolas, a Vraska's Contempt, and then a Thought Erasure of his own. Pretty reasonable holdings. One thing about Thought Erasure, it has a lot of raw power in the sense that you can take any non-land card, but there's not really a great way to break this hand up. I actually need to correct myself. That second card from the top is not a land. That looks like a negate. Question for me, I don't know that Jessup has an untapped black mana. So while he has Thought Erasure, I don't think it's online until turn three. Uh, he has a he has Steam that Vents as his first land. Dragon Skull yeah. Summit checks for Mountain. Oh, okay. So he can Thought Erasure here. It's a synergy deck. <laughs> yeah, and either way, Tangem decides there's something in his own hand worth protecting. Takes that Thought Erasure. That information can be really big in games like this. Uh, some of the elements we've been talking about, one of the more, more powerful cards in Tenjim's deck is the Eldest Reborn, four copies of that. It's a huge right. breaker in mirror matches. If you can protect that, you that information that you have it, set up to cast it, you can get a situation where you can really leverage an advantage. Well, Duress from Tenjim gets negated, and then another Duress takes Varaska's Contempt. It's going to leave Jessup with a hand of third land, Nicol Bolas, and two copies of Dream Eater. Slow some expense. One. Yeah, that's a slow one. Bullets can do work here. Dream Eater's a long ways off. Jessup wants to draw, I don't know, exactly Notion Rain here. That would be very nice. Start getting some land drops. I was say, is it, can he get Spell Pierce? I think he drew a second. <laughs> oh, this is a shock here. I don't know if he's bluffing a counter spell. I wanted to say no. he drew a second Nickel Bolas. So, Ryan, there are two Spell Pierces in Tenjum's board. Um, so I was just thinking about that Notion Rain. Yeah, he drew another bolus. So we got a two Ooh, pair of bolus. Got that duress. I'd, I'd shock to get a duress out of my opponent's hand. Ooh, and Tendrum's not going to capitalize. First, not only did he miss on the duress. Oh, and here's Notion Rain. Yeah, that's a um, nice draw for Jessup. Yeah, Tendrum missed land four. Things were looking good for him, but what a turn. Andrew just misses the land drop, whiffs on a duress, and then his opponent top decks the Notion Rain. Ah, oof. I got to give props to Jessup for chalking there. Certainly a yeah. matchup where the life totals don't matter, but it's really easy to make the play where you just play your steam vents tapped, pass the turn. Tenjum thought there was something, so he fired off the duress. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it suggests, honestly, because you don't know deck lists, right? Um, our sab sabotage, the, yep. the count, that's just what he's, Sinister it, Sabotage. Yeah, it looks like a Sinister Sabotage for sure. And something that we talked about earlier in the match is Tenjum can really play well in these light resource situations if he draws exactly treasure map. The fact that he has missed on that is really punishing here. Here's Karn for Tenjum. He disdainful stroke to the first nickel bolus. He'll plus two. That's a second Karn in a land. Now he's going to get bolus this next turn. Yep. Or Dream Eater, one of the two. Right. They're fairly interchangeable on this board. Uh, Tenjum, two or th I think two cards left over. So yeah. he's likely to be left with uh, a pretty good spell at the end of casting Nicol Bolas. Yeah, go up to three with this Karn activation. 
Jessup likely wants to just jam a Dream Eater if he has a six land. Yeah, well, I really, if he had one, I'd really like it here. That card is a huge amount of tempo. Now, he didn't draw the land, so we're likely just going to see the dragon. Here's Bolas. Gets Tenjim down to one card. I think you're right. With the way Tenjim's deck is built, games where he doesn't draw a treasure map or search for Ascanta do look rough. Right. Hey, it makes sense to, that he's so heavy on the cards for these reasons, but you still have a fail rate. Yeah. And it looks like that Bolas will just get the Karn that he was given. Yeah, it makes sense. Tenjim holding on to some cards that uh, he's had since very early in the game. Wouldn't be least bit yeah. surprised to see a Vraska's Contempt available. Rather, Tenjim pluses again. Walk the Plank and the Eldest Reborn. That's easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't give him the Eldest Reborn. Maybe he doesn't have the fifth land. That's true. Ever. Oh, there it was. Okay, and he had Eldest Reborn in his oh, hand. All right. Okay, so it's going to happen either way. And this, in a mid-range fight, I love this card. Yeah, it, it's such a big deal. That first stage there deals with the Nickel Bolas, and then inevitably Tenjim gets to make a big A maker off the Eldest Reborn of his own. Thought Erasure from Jessup. And it's not even a great way around it, right? Jessup has Dream Eater, but I don't want to bounce that thing. No, though if you end up in a situation where Tenjim brings back a Nickel Bolas from Jessup's graveyard, then Jessup can use Dream Eater to bounce the Nickel Bolas and then cast his own dragon on the following turn, which could be a big swing back in Jessup's direction. It's going to be something Tenjim has to think about. He's more likely to want to grab something from his own graveyard. Two copies of Walk the Plank in Tenjim's hand. One was Thought Erasured. The Eldersborn plus Jessup discarded Syncopate. And here's another piece of information advantage or a question of hidden information is how many copies of the Eldest Reborn is Tenjim playing? Jessup doesn't have access to that. Right. We know he's playing four copies. So this is, just, this is a key to his deck here, isn't it? Yes. Karn minus one for Eldest Reborn, and Tenjim's just going to cast another one. Is that worth a counter spell? It w is. It'll take the negate. Yeah, even if you're missing on the initial edict effect, the first chapter there, you yeah. still get two cards of value. And if the creature you reanimate is Nickel Bolas, that's a, another discard there. Disdainful stroke drawn for Jessup, but again, he still has those two Dream Eaters in hand and only five lands. And Tenjim knows about them. He's known about them for some time, so has to navigate uh -oh. around Jessup drawing a six mana source, but. Tenjim just produces some counter spell of his own. Then he has that. He has three disdainful strokes in his own sideboard. And how about we get a uh, Vraska Relic Seeker out of the yard with that Eldest Reborn? It's a pretty good one. And I'll go to work. We'll make some pirates. 2 2. Yeah, nothing to destroy, but uh, Vraska threatens to close the game really quickly just by plussing. I've never seen a Vraska minus 10, but this is a board where I could actually see that happen. Yeah. You can also win just by plus 2 a lot. Yeah, I mean, that's the problem, right, is that while you could do that, you might as well, like, once you've drawn all these cards and made all these creatures, that seems awfully aggressive. Yeah, you probably look at minus 10 once you're at, I don't know, 14, at which point your 2-2s two have probably closed the game. Treasure map for Tenjim. Karn was plus, and it looks like this. the story of this game is going to be that Jessup never hit that sixth land for the Dream Eaters. Yep. Um, Dream Eaters is a card I'm really, really excited about off the spoiler. It's, you know, it, it's not the most finesse card, but just had enough stats that that thing looked very playable. Uh, right now, it looks like it just kind of costs too much mana. But right. I, yeah, maybe, maybe Jessup should have brought some treasure <laughs> maps. Uh. A big story of this game is Tendum did have some early mana woes, missed on his fourth land drop for a little bit there, but found that Karn basically on time to really snowball an advantage in his direction from every turn from that point on. The Eldest Reborn really just showing its power level in this format. Yeah, and, and this should be a closeout for Tenjim as these pirates go to attacking. We do have the Vraska at 10. Might see a style move here where he ults it. 
<laughs> but there's a, there's a lot of ways we're threatening to win. You know, we have this Karn going to work, a treasure map going to work. I've uh, played with and against Andrew Tenjum for a couple years. He's not going to do it, is he? He's, he's not, he does no. not have any semblance of fancy play syndrome. I, he's not much of a minus 10 Ooh. for no reason kind of player. No, the reason is you're on camera, and I want to minus 10 this thing on camera. You know what Andrew Tenjum likes doing? What is it? You're going to say winning, aren't winning you? Winning matches. Yes. <laughs> Look, we uh, all have our priorities. Accruing match points over the course of the tournament. Sometimes you just want to look. You you want to register some aw sweet cards and have them do sweet things. I don't know. He might surprise me. There we go. Oh. Minus ten, and it works. Hey, you want a match though, so you wouldn't expect to really uh, <laughs> moment of cravings from there. So relatively safe play. So Andrew Tenjum, two games to one, is going to take the first match of this set, which means. They're the team of Walker, Jessup, and Jessup is going to need to sweep the other two. On the legacy table, they are in game three. We're going to go ahead and leave them there in that Grixis mirror as we work our way over toward modern. Dan Jessup, this is the one where they're going to really need to work. He's, in a, he's already in a one-game hole. He's going to need to win both other games. Again, any game for Joe Bernal here will end the round. Yeah, For Dredge... You generally sideboard a little bit worse than your opponent, but I do feel like Jessup has reasonable main deck uh, odds in this match. Yeah, and it actually looks like just as all they have just finished game two, so we're going to get game three of that matchup. Uh, typically, I like blue white control here, or Zorius, because uh, it has so much non destruction based removal. Is well, that still fair? I mean, Terminus is great. He has four Terminus. Path to Exile is good. You get to tag one creature, but here's a big problem for Bernal. He didn't register any sideboard rest in peace, which matters a lot in this matchup. I know when you look at all these Terminus, when you look yeah. at the Path Exile, you think you can do enough with these tools, but there's other people that are playing all these cards and also have rest in peace, and you, you see them lose matches to Dredge sometimes too. You know, Ryan, I'm actually looking at the deck red sheet, and I think you're absolutely right here. There's another card that's really missing for here, here for me, and that's Settle the Wreckage. Oh, yeah. That's a huge miss in the Dredge matchup. Right? There's none of them. It's not even like he moved them to the sideboard. They're not in the 75. Yeah, it looks like uh, the concession, he's playing a couple copies of Oust, and that's largely going to be combating different types of strategies. It's going to be decks like Infect, decks like Burn, where yeah. having the turn one removal spell really matters, but th this is not that kind of matchup at all. Uh, without any cards like Settle, and with... I don't even think we have Supreme Verdict. Uh, nope, it's just those four Terminus, and he's I'm leaning very heavily on them in this matchup. Is Azori, is he the underdog here? I mean, I thought just in general, he Dredge was? Okay. had big upgrades in this matchup just off of, streaking, uh, of uh, cre Creeping Chill. I haven't seen it played out yet, but that, that's my gut read. And based on the list that I'm looking at, I, I do think that Jessup is going to be a little favored. So I do want to go back to this because this type of build of Azorius Control with no verdicts, no settles... Uh, Last time we cast our Modern Open, Azorius, you know, Colonnade was the deck. There was Azorius and Jeskai everywhere, and the real in thing to do was to play two main deck copies of Settle the Wreckage. I think we even had three out of some players. Mm -hmm. um, so Joe's not on any of that. What is, he, what is he on? You know, what matchups? Where He's given away some points here. Where has he picked them up? Yeah, so he's playing a couple main deck remands, which is really going to shine if you expect it to be a Celestial Colonnade format, right? If you're going to play a Blue Mirror, remanding your own spell is really about the best thing you can do in the modern formats to fight counter wars. Uh, as I mentioned, the two copies of Oust, those are really going to help you uh, fight against the low to the ground creature aggressive decks. But yeah, Dredge doesn't seem to be on the radar. I do like moving away from the heavy Settle the Wreckage once that becomes the established version of the deck be because people are playing around Settle anyway. So you just gain that value where we even saw the last time we covered Modern, Settle the Wreckage wasn't, that wasn't week one for that technology. That right. was like week three-ish and people were already attacking with one creature into it. And then it was just like the worst path to exile. Yeah, Settle the Wreckage does get worse once it's known. There are matchups like the Dredge matchup where even if they know about it, you know, whatever, what's Dredge gonna do? Not like if they once you hit you with if they're gonna hit you with only one Narc Amoeba and one Stinkweed Imp, that's fine. Yeah, 
I mean, well, what, what Dredge is going to do is dredge life from the loam and conflagrate you and creep and chill you out of the game. I think that I guess, yeah. <laughs> okay, that's exactly what they're going to do. I think do. Dredge is still quite capable of winning. <laughs> Well, I like the upgrade here. Uh, of notes on the deck registration sheet, you mentioned those four copies of Creeping Chill, the card from Guilds of Ravnica. In order to better utilize that, uh, Dan has reached for some technology from a long time ago. He's got four copies of Shriekhorn in the main deck now as well. It's more proactive self-milling. Yeah, that's exactly what I was... What he, I'm looking at. He also has the two sideboard Assassin's Trophy. Frequently you see dredge players with abrupt decay yeah. on the sideboard. Uh, Assassin's Trophy catches ley lines. Yeah, so what he's done to move away from them, no copies of Insolent Neonate in the deck anymore. Okay. He's gone with Shriekhorn. That, that's the spot Shriekhorn took. I mean, you, you got you to gotta cut something to yeah. make room for innovations, right? Yeah, they're both, they're, and they're similar style cards, so that much makes sense to me too. Mm. I would not consider myself a dredge expert, but I would consider myself an insolent neonate fan. <laughs> so I am personally hurt at the exclusion of the card. I like Shriekhorn. I think you remember, I tried to register Shriekhorn for a pro tour. You did. It was, you, you, it was you got constructed. Yeah, you got me. Uh, you were on that at that one. You got me to not do it. Yeah. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really good constructed record because... Because my, because my, 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 because you, let me my, register my, team, my teammates made me play Consecrated Sphinx instead of Shriekhorn. <laughs> <laughs> See, they both take two cards off the top of your deck every turn. One of them puts them in your hand and well, attacks well, for four. What was it? What's the, uh, the Phoenix? Kuldotha Phoenix. I wanted to Shriekhorn into Kuldotha Phoenixes. And then you just have Metalcraft waiting for you. It was going to be great. <laughs> How would anyone stop that? It, it, it seems impossible. It can't be done. I'm sure Tempered Steel can't race that. <laughs> <laughs> I believe Jessup on a mold of five. Dredge yeah. pretty regularly mulligans heavily, though. We'll see what he's able to put in his graveyard. There's at least a Narc Amoeba stuck in the opening hand. He never liked to see that. No. No, not great. Bernal, we're going to see fetch here for a Hollowed Fountain. And another second land and a go here for Bernal. Got an opt in hand on three copies of opt here. That's his terminus enabler. We were seeing, I think, some uh, hieroglyphic illuminations last month. He's going to get away from that fancy play. This being a fancy play, as you know, Dredge does things like turn two, cast loam, get back nothing, go. <laughs> just, just legitimate magic happening here. Yeah, and even if Jessup had a cathartic reunion, that would probably be the play in the face of negate or logic not mana there. And now we'll start to dredge. Three cards. Here's the Shriekhorn and a Narc Amoeba and a land. Get that 1-1 one, one into play. Start getting a card back with that life yeah. from the loam. Really just go off. So that turn one, shocking for, say, for uh, Stomping Ground. If you're playing Azorius, can you read that for Nature's Claim? You certainly can. I mean, that would be the spell you shock yeah. for, right? I can't think of anything else Dredge is trying to do at instant speed. Yeah, I mean, uh, Lightning Axe, but not in this yeah, matchup. Yeah, against the control deck, right? Yeah. Though, so, uh, Bernal got him by not registering Stony Silence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or Rest in Peace? Right, right, that's the one. I confuse those boring white enchantments. Yeah, the boring enchantments that in certain matchups are ridiculous. Yeah. Two hate, mana attempt to win the game. And I like how, again, Jessup's going for Loam and a, a Snapcaster spell snared here. There still is a third land. Last turn, actually, Jessup decided to not play it. And this turn, he'll, he'll play it. Yeah, you wanted to maintain it in case you wanted to trigger a Bloodgast. Okay. The thing about it, though, is eventually Bernal's not going to be able to counter life from the Loam anymore. He's going to run yeah. out of the ability to do that. And Bernal's going to path to exile his own Snapcaster Mage, it looks like. He does have a couple of sideboard Lyra Dawnbreakers. Well, I think I caught one of his sideboard Archangel Avacins in his hand. Okay. I mean, that does clean up against Dredge. Yeah, that might actually be good here, huh? <laughs> yeah. That's a card I haven't seen in a while. Can be a little bit tough to make your Avacyn transform, considering he has four creatures in his main deck and he just passed one out of the way. 
I mean, if Jessup attacks, do you think he's expecting Archangel Avacyn to ambush an Archimiba? Probably not. I don't know if it's a huge concern. <laughs> the concern is when the Avacyn starts cracking back. That's, yeah. That's yeah. the problem. And a second Archimiba for Jessup. He'll swing with one. And does the... Yeah, there we go. Ooh. Shadows over I, in Estrad. Good on the director for getting that face cam. Dan <laughs> Jessup's <laughs> reactions to that is... That's the best. I'm looking like... Huh. Well, <laughs> I, yeah, oh, okay. I like I like the look where he turns to his brother and gives a slight eyebrow raise of <laughs> Yeah, that happened. Were you here for that? Did you you saw that, right? <laughs> I was just, just checking in. Oh, that was nice. Now he has the option between trying for some more loams or just casting stinkweed imp and he does yeah. kinda wanna block. Ooh. He had milled over a faithless looting as well. Yeah. So there were no other dredgers in the graveyard. He gets to pitch the two that were already in his hand. Okay, there's Bloodgast. And Stinkweed Imp. Okay. So he's got Bloodgast. That can come back. He'll have Stinkweed Imp for next turn. He'll have that dredge set up. There's a lot to like. Mm -hmm. And something that uh, I'm curious about, my, my initial assumption would be that in matchups where you want to sideboard heavily, and you see Jessup with the Nature's Claim in hand, three copies of that on the sideboard. Possibly reach for the Assassin's Trophy as well. I, I want to say that the Creeping Chills are the first card that you sideboard out. The way this match is going, where Bernal's still at 18, it makes sense that Creeping Chill would not be here or there. Right. One thing I do like, and they're going to shake hands, which means Matthew Hoey, is go I'm going to believe, was victorious on the Legacy table. Um, Dredge actually sometimes had some tough times with, could have tough times with a burn matchup. Uh, that card would, seems like it'd be incredible against burn. Yeah, that's a huge deal. You not only hit them for three to advance your clock, but you gain three life. Yeah. We will confirm that that was not a concession from Dan Jessup, but rather a victory for Matt Hoey. And either way, I, you know, I don't like Dan Jessup's situation on that match either. Yeah, he was making a lot of pretty desperate plays. He wasn't doing anything that was really at the height of the power level of Dredge. You know, sometimes you end up in a situation where you are doing powerful things and your opponent breaks up what you're doing with some kind of graveyard hate. But um, what happened there was Jessup's deck really didn't do much of anything. Bernal had a ton of breathing room, just got to start casting all of his spells. All right. 